Hello, this is Dave again at AFX Search, Licensed Investigators. Did you know that the number one and number two are much more common than number eight or nine? What does that mean for a fraud investigation? You would think that the distribution of numbers on a financial statement, on a bank statement, would always be the same. Uh, but the percentages are not random. And it's, it's um, something you may have heard before called Benford's Law. So if you took let's say a spreadsheet of a uh, set of financial statements of a business or even a checking account and write down all the numbers of every check all the values on checks or invoices from vendors and you took all those invoice numbers and you put them into a spreadsheet and took every number separately so if, uh, let's say one of the figures is twelve hundred and eight dollars you have a one a two a zero and an eight you take all those numbers and you add them up and see how many ones appear in that statement how many twos and threes you would think that it would be exactly equal the reality is it should not be equal. In fact, there should be about 10 times as many ones as there are eights or nines. Each number decreases by half as you go down the line. There's twice as many ones as twos, there's twice as many twos as threes, and down the line. This frequency distribution is an excellent tool in a fraud investigation. When you find an area where there's an equal or uh, incorrect distribution of numbers, that may be where the fraud is. That may be where there's a department that's stealing money, making up invoices, uh, forging checks, uh, or any other type of fraud that might be out there. Look, the IRS uses it on tax returns. If somebody makes up numbers on a tax return, the first thing the IRS does with tax returns is they run it through a computer that runs Benford, uh, Benford's law on the numbers. If those numbers don't conform to the correct ratios, it's flagged for fraud. Sometimes that might be legitimate, but a lot of times it's the first step in discovering a fraud. It's easy to anal analyze this with a spreadsheet. You put the numbers in and it uh, breaks it down where the, uh, the number distribution is not correct. If you can separate the sections of a financial statement or checks by a department, by section, it'll show you where that fraud is. If you break it down by each department in a business and all of a sudden all the, the percentages are correct except for one is equal, then that's gonna show that there may be fraud in that department. Uh, why does this work? Why is this the case? Well, it has to do with logarithms of numbers, meaning that if you have linear growth, if numbers go up the same amount each time, it takes twice as long to go from one to two, as it does from two to three, as it does from three to four. Uh, so when that happens, it throws off the percentages of numbers. It works for everything. If you take the closing numbers for the stock market for the last hundred years every day, throw them into a spreadsheet, the same pattern will appear. If you take the distance to every star in the universe and plot that in a spreadsheet, the same numbers will appear. Uh, this uh, number distribution is universal, it works everywhere, and it can be used really effectively to flush out where fraud might exist on a financial statement, uh, within checking accounts, or any other place where numbers are involved. So uh, this is one of the tools we use as fraud investigators to locate where fraud might be, and then we can drill further to find out exactly who is the fraudster.